Hi, uh, I'm Steve Woods, Senior Engineering Director at Google and the lead of Engineering for Google in Canada. Well, uh, look, we're going to talk about Waterloo today, obviously, um, and I'm curious to know from you what makes Waterloo an attractive place in which to live and do business. What do you see as some of Waterloo's main competitive advantages? Waterloo is a very interesting community and Google is here for the same reasons that many other tech companies uh, are here and have been here over the years. It has an astounding array of education in the context of engineering, computer science, mathematics. Um, it is the largest computer science, computer engineering school in the world uh, by the number of students and one of the highest in terms of quality of undergraduates on a par with or in some categories better than uh, schools like MIT, Carnegie Mellon and Stanford. So um, it attracts talent from all over the world. Uh, much of that talent stays in Canada and here and it comes across from all across the country as well. Uh, I myself am from Saskatchewan and I eventually came to this community at one point in my life because of that. Um, so that's one aspect of it. That's complemented, of course, by a business school of very high quality um, at Wilfrid Laurier University. So there's a real rich and diverse array of students uh, across the spectrum here. Um, and that really sets up the community for success because you cannot build tech companies without a steady stream of tremendous talent. So we have that. The community also has this really unique aspect of um, co-opetition amongst the people in the community. So this is most exemplified by an organization called Communitech in Town that is a, basically a rallying point for the tech companies and the cities and the regions and, and the governments of Ontario and Canada as well um, to work together to address the problems or the opportunities that come from the community. Um, there's lots of great stories around that. Basically, the day I arrived in uh, Waterloo, back from California, where I was for 12 years, and I came to lead Google, um, I received a call literally the same day from the head of Communitech, Ian Klugman, asking me to dinner. Uh, I went eventually on a Sunday night, uh, literally the second day I was back in town, uh, met the president of the university, several CEOs uh, from the larger companies in town, and I was asked within five minutes of getting my first glass of wine, which is... It's great you're here. What is Google going to do for us in the community? And that is the kind of thing we do. I meet with uh, many Silicon Valley companies uh, on behalf of either Communitech or basically the community and talk to them about why they should be here. So it's it's not kind of a us or them opinion here. It's how do we all work together to build this community? And this is quite a novel thing compared to many places in the world. And by the way, very similar to how Silicon Valley originally started in California. So it sounds like clearly the, the human uh, talent pool is uh, probably the biggest, at least it's the first competitive advantage you mentioned. And perhaps also, and correct me if I'm wrong, the sort of human size of the community in the region, because what you describe, you know, being uh, able to connect with people so quickly uh, is perhaps not as um, common, let's say, in major urban centers. You know, Silicon Valley, like I said, had this for very many years. In fact, some Silicon Valley historians have come here, Steve Blank in particular, who I met with and talked about this to us and said, you know, this is a very unique aspect of the community that we really want to preserve. So we work hard to preserve that. Um, I would say also that uh, we often spend time explaining what makes the community amazing to newcomers. And um, I think that once they understand when they come in the community, how important it is to give back, to engage with the university, internships, fund research, um, sort of work together on community initiatives like transit or, um, you know, uh, bike lanes or whatever it is that it's worth doing to make it better. I think people really uh, like that because if you think of our community here, we, we have less than a million people in this tech region overall, including everything, you know, Cambridge and, and everything else. But that million people, in, inside that million people, is the highest density of startups outside of Mountain View, California in the world. And so there's a denseness to it, a collaborative aspect, and, and this creates this dynamic environment that has incubators, has venture availability, a high number of very, very high quality startups that are often incubated in California through uh, organizations such as Y Combinator, but then turn around and come back and build their teams here and their companies here. Uh, and so this has become a world a world brand that people understand now. So people in California understand Waterloo and what it means. And when I say Waterloo, I mean Waterloo region, of course. Um, and I think that has become a bit of an accelerator 
you know, people know about it. People have always attracted talent from here, but now they understand that not only is this region a great place to be, but Canada is a great place to be because of its forward-looking immigration policies around tech um, and uh, et cetera. So um, yeah, a lot of great things here. How do you gauge uh, the quality of our artificial intelligence slash machine learning ecosystem? Uh, certainly in Canada, we're very proud of it and we see ourselves as world leaders. I'd love to have your sort of balanced assessment, you know, what's good, what needs, what do we need to work on and how do you see it evolve over time? Right. So it's, what's interesting is, is in, in talking about the Canadian ecosystem for artificial intelligence, you know, um, and machine learning, you end up talking about three major locations primarily uh, with possibly a fourth. So Montreal, obviously a center um, of great competency, Toronto primarily around Jeff Hinton and his Uh, subsequent students uh, who've gone on to all kinds of things, which we can come back to. Um, Waterloo and its long history in artificial intelligence. Uh, I moved here originally um, for in order to do a master's degree in artificial intelligence and subsequently returned later to do a PhD in it um, because of the long history of the University of Waterloo. And now it is once again, um, you know, created another artificial intelligence center around machine learning. So there, there is a large... Uh, concentration in Canada that's very well understood internationally. People want to come here. Um, we have other centers of technology capacity, such as quantum computing in Waterloo, which is an international attractor, perhaps the single, excuse me, biggest international attractor of that type of talent worldwide. And now across Canada, we sort of have three, possibly another one uh, in Alberta as well. Um, and so <clears throat> I think this is a huge opportunity for us. Um, we are constantly uh, advocating more integration of machine learning uh, as part of a core computer science and computer engineering degree set. Um, increasingly, that's becoming true uh, across the University of Toronto, University of Waterloo, uh, the universities in Montreal as well. And so I, I think the more that we educate our core population, not so much on the core mathematics necessarily, Uh, of machine learning, but what kinds of things can be done with the tools, what kind of things will be capable of being done in the coming years. I think we're going to generate an ecosystem of entrepreneurs that are doing truly uh, astounding things. And so I think we're in a very strong position for this. Um, as many other people have said, it's important that we continue to find ways of being creative in not only attracting people to be educated here, but in finding ways to encourage them to remain in Canada, whether that's in Montreal, whether it's in Toronto, whether it's in Alberta, or whether it's in uh, regions like Waterloo to help our ecosystem grow. But the opportunities are are amazing. Um, and I, I think we're doing a really good job at the moment of, of making it uh, possible for people to build these kinds of companies here. So it sounds like you're largely saying that appreciation for the potential of AI and also adoption are key Uh, to the sector's development. Are there other, let's say, major hurdles or low-hanging fruits where you say, if we could do this, you know, we could really, uh, uh, you know, s strengthen our leadership globally? Um, I, I, there's obviously more things we can always do. I think institutions like the Vector Institute, which Google is a, a co-investor in with other companies and government partners, um, is a great example of how we can find ways in partnership, but not necessarily part of universities to create environments where ideas can be created, can be uh, transitioned into companies more easily. Uh, things like the University of Waterloo's intellectual property um, situation where they allow people who produce it as part of their education, intellectual property as part of the education, to actually remain owners of that. So for example, if you're a PhD student at the University of Waterloo and you make a groundbreaking breakthrough, you own that breakthrough. The university can become a partner if you want them to in helping you monetize it or helping you build companies. And that's fantastic. There's a number of programs that they have offered, for instance, and you, Toronto has similar but different ones. And I think these kinds of programs uh, are, are, are enormously impactful over the years. So like, for example, the Vector Institute is not part of the university but it attracts other kinds of researchers worldwide. What would be your final thoughts on that? And perhaps to other you know, global investors or even talent looking at Canada right now and thinking, you know, hey, would that be the right time to, to make a move there? It, it, it is challenging during, the, during this time. And so, you know, we have tried to be supportive of organizations in the province uh, of Ontario, for example, wherever we live in the, in the world, but certainly here, with our local hospital communities, with our local um, epidemiology communities, and ha have made Google resources and expertise available where we can. 
but that said, um, you know, we are part of a, a community and a, and a province and a country that is going through some challenging times. I think that uh, during this kind of upheaval in the United States with immigration becoming a real uh, challenge for their companies um, that are based in the United States, uh, we have seen a huge influx of both uh, people from the United States who are working there, uh, who no longer can, um, who are switching their focus to Canada in not a temporary way, but in a permanent way, moving their lives and their families and their futures to our country. And this is hugely advantageous for us. Um, and this is something that hopefully we can continue um, irrespective of what the United States does and, and keep making Canada a net attractor for tech talent um, and families that will then go on to do all kinds of things outside of the tech community um, in the coming, coming years. And there's these trends, which we're all very familiar with in the tech world, where uh, first and second generation immigrants to, to uh, countries are often the core innovators. And if you look at someone like Toby at Shopify, it's an absolute perfect example of this, or Larry Page um, and Sergey at Google. And so I think seeing Canada perhaps as having that kind of inbound talent is a huge, a huge thing for us. And at the end of the day, the virus is, is the, the coronavirus pandemic is, is horrible. It's been disruptive. It will continue to be for some months. Um, but as, as they say, we will all get through it. And I think that um, we're fortunate to be able to look, to live in a country um, that is going to come out looking very good at the end of this. And I think we have to uh, rely on our governments uh, to help us get to that point. <laughs>